Hi, I'm Lee. This is Vision Eternity Ministries. Welcome. Jesus is teaching us how to be ready for him that day, how to excel and who we are in him, him and us. And so I have a word for you today. I'm excited to share. I don't get a word every year like some, some people do, but for 2024, I have a word for us. Let's acknowledge him. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for this word that you have for us today. This, this word that will help us to excel, to prosper in every area, area of our life, to flourish. Thank you for being here. We depend on you. Give you all the glory. And so, yeah, Jesus has been talking to me actually for a while about flourishing. And I didn't really know what he meant. And today I have a revelation of that. But um, he's talking about the word that I have today is to start 2024 with a new identity of who you are. And the way you do that is to, you know, people have, um, they, they have their opinion of you. And many times when you see that person because of the things they've said to you or the rejection that has happened in your life, even to the place of bullying, um, you get their vision of yourself. And as a man thinks, so is he. And so we meditate, if we meditate on what their opinion is, on the things that were said to us, the negative things, then that's who we're going to be. And you need to know that your warfare isn't against flesh and blood, but the enemy uses people. He uses people. He, he uses um, the things in our lives that have happened through those people to try to control us, to, to keep us from excelling, prospering, following after Jesus, to keep us from being that overcomer that Jesus asked us to be. He's trying to get us to quit and, and to give up and succumb to those opinions that we have formed in our head from those things in our past, those people who haven't been kind to us. You know, um, Timothy says, in the last days, I mean, things are recently happening. Rejection is more than ever. If you're following Jesus, then the rejection in your life is going to be so much more than it has been. Because 2 Timothy 3 says, Understand this, and the last days will come. Perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. People will be lovers of self, utterly self-centered, lovers of money, aroused by inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, profane, They'll be without natural human affection. And they'll be callous and inhuman, relentless. This is the Amplified Classic Bible. Um, admitting of no truths or appeasement. They'll be slanders, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce. They'll be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They'll be lovers of sensual pleasures and amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. They'll hold a form of piety to religion, but they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it, their conduct, bellies, and the genuineness of their profession, and we should avoid all such people. And so God is saying to have this new identity, those people that are saying, maybe just saying they're Christians, the ones that are rejecting you, they're immoral. Um, they, they just have no compassion for you anymore. And at one point had. Also, Corinthians says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them, inconsistent with your faith. That is going to pull you back. We have to separate we have to separate. If you're going to follow Jesus, you can't afford to take on someone else's opinion of you. You have to think what God thinks of you. You have to think his way. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. 
He created you. And when you choose to follow after him, you have to, you have to come out from among them. You have to make that clear choice. You have to break off those things in your life that steal your true identity. And that's what the enemy is trying to do. So then it says, um, how can light have fellowship with the dark? You can't. You can't. It just doesn't work. And, and the more that you follow Jesus, the more that darkness is going to try to take over. And that's really where the bullying comes in, because there, there's going to be a group of people that are going to form that darkness in your life, because Satan is trying to get you to bend, to pick those old relationships over Jesus, even though they're not nice to you, they're not kind. Even though, you know, we tend to want um, to, to look back and want what was. And things change. And they're just not going to be. And Jesus is saying, let go. Let go of those relationships that are just not good for you. They're actually poison. Because you're not in the same page with them. They're following after the enemy. You're following after Jesus. What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? You don't have anything in common. You know, and as we read, they have this form of godliness. So they try to make you think that they trust God and they believe God. But you can know after talking to a person for five minutes where they're coming from, if they really know Jesus or not, that's going to be clear. So what agreement can there be between a temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of living God, and even as God said, I will dwell in and with them and among them, and I will walk in with and among them, and they will be, and I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. So come out from among the unbelievers and separate. Sever yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch not any unclean thing. Then I will receive you and kindly treat you with favor. And I'll be your father, I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Um, things are changing. It's close to Jesus' return. The enemy is getting nervous. And those who don't know God are, are, are in so much danger. And they're being used by him. And they can't see what you can see. And, you know, you can only help them so much. And then, like Jesus did, you have to walk away because they won't bend. They're critical. They're, they're critical of you. Remember when Jesus was here? They found so many things wrong with him that weren't wrong with him. They were just nitpicking. They were petty. The, I'm talking about the Pharisees. And um, even chose for Jesus to be crucified over a murderer. And that's how things are going to be. Even though you're, 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 you're good and you're following Jesus and you're loving them, and some of them, you know, you do, you dearly and tenderly love them, but Jesus is saying, you got to let go. Because not everyone is going to choose him. At some point, you got to let go. And you, you, I feel like he's saying that as a word for 2024. Change your identity. Stop being who they are saying you are. Stop, stop thinking of yourself as they think of you. Because it's just going to tear you apart. You're not going to be able to flourish. You're not going to be able to follow Jesus if you keep following them. And I, I just keep getting this vision on my left. Are you going to let go of the world and those things in it and follow me? Because if you don't, if you hang on to that, you will perish. Because that is the plan of the enemy, for you to perish. So create a new identity for yourself, Jesus is saying. And you do that by, what did he say, severing those relationships. Just cut them off. And of course, they're going to have everything to say about it. But if you walk away, when they're about to push Jesus over the cliff, he walked away. You don't have to listen to it. Because if you do... It, it, it's just going to come on you like, like an evil um, 
darkness and it's going to overtake you and you're going to be thinking bad things of yourself. You're going to be thinking those things that they're thinking of you. And God is saying, that is not your identity. Don't let the devil, the devil put that on you. Let go of that. Come out from among them. Stop letting them torment you. You know, whatever you have to do to, to get away from it, to get away from those people, do it. Maybe you have to move. I don't know. Um, maybe you have to change your number. I don't know what it is, but you can figure it out. What do you have to do to separate yourself from that evil, from those who are pulling you into a different identity than you really are? You know who you are. When you sit with Jesus, you know who you are. And anybody that wants to take that away from you, I mean, confront them. But if they won't listen, walk away. And that doesn't mean you're, you're, you're not a loving, kind person. That means that you are taking the bull by the horns. What you're doing is you're preparing for an attack before it even comes. You're preparing for what the enemy has in mind for you before it even happens. Jesus is telling us things to come. He's saying separate. He's already separating the sheep from the goats, the light from the dark. And you have to make your choice. Either you're going to hang on to them who once loved you and now don't treat you very well. Or you're going to cut off those relationships and move forward in this new identity. You don't, you don't even know. Um, I feel like God is saying, you don't even know how you will flourish until you let go of who they think you are. Of you thinking you are who they think you are. Because you're so used to it. Maybe you grew up with someone all your life that was putting you down. And, and so each time you, you engage in a certain activity, you think of that person and you think what they think of you and what they said to you. You need to stop and, and get that out. Form your new identity without that. Every time that thought comes, cut it off. Every time you get a picture of that person in your mind, cut it off. And what you're doing is you're resisting the enemy. You're resisting him trying to tell you who you are and that you're not good enough and you're a bad person and this, that, and the other thing when you're not. People that are saying degrading things to you, people that are looking down on you are not, they're not your friends. They don't love you. If someone is supporting you and walking towards Jesus, if you're on the same page with them and they're on the same page with Jesus, that's different, but if they're not, they're your enemy. And they're trying to look like your friend. They're, they're, they're trying to look like they love you. They may say that they love you, but they're, when they condemn you and to say that you're not good enough and try to, get, try to be in control of you, try to get you to think what they think and act how they act, when they're comparing themselves to you and they're not following Jesus, cut that relationship off. Be done with it. Unless they repent and change, then you need to be done with that. Form your new identity for 2024. That's the word that I have from Jesus today. I think it's awesome, amazing wonderful how he is showing us how to be that overcomer he said in revelation he said when you overcome your name won't be blotted out of the book of life many say they pray many say yes i'll marry you jesus but they don't overcome if somebody doesn't like them they conform they go back they're hanging on to that old life because they're afraid if they don't love them they're they're afraid of who they think they are they, they want to tell them, I'm good. I'm not who you say you are. 
But you know what? Jesus is your vindicator. You don't need to explain anything to them. Approach them, and if they don't listen, then that's it. That's it. That's what the word says. Approach them. And if they don't listen, bring a witness. And if they still don't listen, right? And so Jesus will, he will confirm this word to you if you go to him today, if this is for you. If you have people in your life that are dragging you down, then he's going to confirm this word to you. You might even be feeling it right now. The things that are pulling you back, hanging on to you, keeping you, stealing your time even, keeping you from Jesus. You know, when someone's cruel to you, the enemy just rolls that over and over and over in your mind. And the time that you could be spending with Jesus and growing and walking in his plan is being taken from you by you staying connected and mulling over and over in that God has a plan for your life but he can't make that happen if you're not giving him the time to do that if you're letting the enemy control you then you're walking in his plan and not God's and you gotta you gotta take the bull by the horns you gotta decide who you're gonna follow and those who are following after the enemy we just read in Corinthians that we should have nothing to do with them what does light have to do with dark? What does God have to do with the enemy? Separate yourself. Separate yourself from them. You know, when Jesus was here, he was talking to me about this. He, he couldn't wait to get out of here because of all the evil, because people didn't believe. It's frustrating that they won't believe, but you got to let go. got to let go. Just like on that day, he's going to have to say, I didn't know you. It saddens him. I, I, I showed you I had this vision from him, and he said, away from me, I never knew you. He doesn't want to say that. You don't want to say that to those people in your life that you loved, who once loved you, but you have to. You have to separate yourself from them. Let's acknowledge Jesus. Jesus, we thank you and praise you for showing us this truth today. We thank you so much that you're telling us how to be that overcomer, that you're warning us to come out from among them, that you're, you're showing us our new identity that will help us to prosper and flourish in your will and your plan. And we just hang on to that right now. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We give you all the glory. We're going to follow you. And we're going to walk in our new identity, who you say we are. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. If you said that prayer, I'd be so excited to know. If this ministered to you, I'd love to know. If you're going to start... 2024, which we're a little bit into it already. Um, but if you're going to start with that new identity of who Jesus says you are, not who they say you are, then I really would love to know. I really would love to know. And Vision Eternity Ministries is on your side. We have a vision for eternity. And we want to know that we're helping you to get to that place. And we're praying for you that you can live with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Forever. Thank you so much for listening. Actually, you know, if you never asked Jesus to come and live on the inside of you, Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And if you would heed my voice, I'll come and live on the inside of you. He's asking you to marry him. And so if you're willing to commit to him, then ask him. Ask him now. Say, so come and live on the inside of me. I'm willing to heed your voice. Teach me. You know, the word says, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me and I'll manifest myself to you. If you love him and you obey him, 
He's going to manifest himself to you. He's going to show you who he is. Thank you so much for listening today. God bless you.